The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Salem Media of Hawaii. Welcome to Generations Radio, where the focus is on our seniors and their families. We are here each Saturday afternoon from 5 until 6 p.m., bringing you resourceful information with our radio team of professionals in the field of aging. Stay with us for the next one hour as we explore different ways to make life more exciting and meaningful for our extraordinary seniors. Right here on AM 690, The Answer. And now, here is our host and the publisher of Generations Magazine, Percy Ihara. And good afternoon, good Saturday, good Sunday, depending on when you're listening to us. I am not Percy. Um, my name is Scott Spalina, and I'm a writer for Generations Magazine. Percy could not be here today because he is so busy. But uh, another person that's busy that's going to be joining us today is Tracy Wilkin. She's from the Mediation Center of the Pacific. But before we jump into uh, uh, what she has to say about the Kapuna Pono program, um, let me shout out to the people that have just joined us for the very first time. This is Generations Radio. This is a partnership with Generations Magazine. Percy Hara is the publisher of Generations Magazine. Um, it's a free publication that you can find all over the island. It's a resource for um, seniors in our community, living well seniors in our community, um, that basically want to make the most out of their golden years. It's a free publication you can find pretty much everywhere. I get mine at Big City Diner, but I know the public libraries have them. There's a couple of kiosks in downtown. Also on the uh, neighbor islands, you can find the Generations Magazine as well. And also, they have a fantastic website. They just redid their website. For those of you that want to jump on and look at the past issues of Generations um, Magazine, it's generations808.com. And the best thing about generations808.com is that this radio show is going to be put on there as well as all the past radio shows. And Percy has been able to get some terrific guests um, that are the experts in their area of expertise in aging and helping seniors, again, get the most out of life. And so I encourage anybody. It's very user-friendly, the website, so don't be intimidated by uh, – it's not like going on eBay or Amazon where you get lost easily. Like that. Uh, Generations808.com um, is a very user-friendly website. If you want to know what's going on in Hawaii, um, they have a – excellent calendar there and again it's a good resource for the past things um before we get on to uh talk about the kapuna program the kapuna pono program um the current issue of generations magazine um has some very important information that being that in august august 20th saturday august 20th at the alawan hotel is the 10th annual aging in place workshop um I met Percy back in 2008, and he's a terrific networker, a terrific resource for seniors. And the best thing about Percy is that he hosts this workshop at the Alamoana Hotel, and it has over 60 exhibitors, all-day conferences, all-day seminars in the breakout rooms, anything from understanding Medicaid to advanced healthcare planning to the 10 warning signs of Alzheimer's, to decluttering, to long-term financing, to estate planning. Um, and that's only like part of the morning calendar I just read you. But I encourage you, if you are aging, if your parents are aging, and if you want to stay at home and live a financially secure life in your later years, um, I encourage you to go to the Aging in Place uh, workshop. Again, it's on at um, Saturday, August 20th, um, and that's going to be coming up pretty sh soon because you know we're going to be flying through July, and then bang, it's going to be uh, Saturday, August 20th already. And so I encourage you to make the time to go to this free, that's right, free, all-day uh, workshop at the Alamon Hotel. Now, having plugged that, and again, I can't plug it enough, we're going to now go to um, the lady with the most is here. Uh, that's going to be Tracy. Thank you, Tracy, for joining us. Thank you, Scott. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Now, I had heard you speak um, about the Kapuna Pono program, and this is something that I'm surprised I didn't hear about earlier because it's so important. And let me, as a brief introduction, um, I have been dealing with seniors since 2008 when I created the Elder Abuse Unit at the prosecutor's office. And now almost daily I get calls 
from caregivers. And as you know, Tracy, the biggest caregiving segment is family members. Yep. Caring for family members. And that's a tremendously stressful responsibility. There's a lot of heartache, hand-wringing, and frustration that goes on in being a family caregiver. and something that you probably see every day. Absolutely. And that's why we created the Kapuna Pono program, because of all the stress um, and angst and anxiety that it takes as a caregiver, it often is fertile ground for conflict among family members. Now, tell us exactly what it is that you do over there at the Mediation Center of the Pacific. Well, let me back up a little. So we offer mediation for disputes of all types. And if you're not familiar with the mediation process, when people are in conflict, and it can be any type of conflict, we bring people together at a day and time that works for them, um, and they get to work with two mediators. We have that luxury of assigning two mediators since they're providing their services pro bono. And what they do is they listen to each side listen to what's important to them. They work with them in private and joint sessions, and they ask them questions and listen to their stories so that they can listen with impartial ears and maybe hear things that they weren't able to hear themselves and then help them negotiate agreements that work for them. Now, who would be your typical, do you call them clients? Yes. Okay. Who would be your typical clients that would see the General Mediation Center side? Well, we serve everybody. Okay. Um, I do have to say that we're the only option, the only dispute resolution option for individuals in the lower income bracket. People with financial resources can hire private mediators where people without those resources, they can use our services because we charge on a sliding fee scale according to household income. And we see divorcing couples. Okay. Um, unmarried couples with children, they're not going to be a couple, but they still need to work out time sharing and co-parenting arrangements for their kids. We see co-workers who aren't getting along. We oh, really? assist uh. with civil rights complaints. Um, we mediate between uh, homeowners or condominium owners and their board of directors. And we wow. mediate between Department of Education and parents of children with special needs. So what we do is broad. Mediation is applicable to almost any type of dispute. Now, this mediation, because I did not know the breadth, and it's a wide breadth you guys have, can anybody off the street come in and use your services, or do you have to be referred to by the court or anything? Actually, we'd prefer you to come off the street. We want people to just call us directly. Unfortunately, a lot of people are ordered or referred from the courts. Okay. Um, and we really want people to think about using us first so they don't end up in court. So all you have to do is contact the Mediation Center of the Pacific and you'll speak to someone in our client services department. They'll determine if your situation is appropriate for mediation. And if it's helpful, they will actually contact the other person or people that you want to mediate with and help them understand who we are and how mediation works. Well, I can see this service that you provide as something that would save people thousands, of, tens of thousands of dollars if they're able to um, have a resolution prior to going to court over something. Absolutely. And I mean, not only does it save them money, but it empowers them to come up with solutions on their own. Our courts are adversarial system. You know, that's the way they're set up. They're about winning and losing. They're about pitting people against each other. And in mediation, it's about helping people talk to one another, understand each other's perspectives, and come up with creative solutions that ideally, and I say ideally because it doesn't always work this way, but ideally their solutions work for both people or everybody at the table. And at no time as a mediator do we tell them what to do. So if they're not able to reach a resolution, they can they can always go to court. Right. And what I'm envisioning, and correct me if I'm wrong, let's say you have a couple that have been together forever and a day, and they decide to have a divorce, break up, or whatever you want to call it. And instead of, maybe they don't agree with everything, so they, instead of hiring lawyers to, like you say, be the adversarial service and go for the throat, um, they'd come to you and see, maybe there's certain ways we can compromise. Correct. And, you know, they can work with an attorney uh, if they want, but ideally they're saving a lot of money and they're working out issues in a less adversarial manner that helps them move on in their lives. Because the bottom line is, 
you know, people get married because they fall in love, and mm-hmm. unfortunately, they get divorced because they fall out of love. That mm-hmm. doesn't mean they need to go to court and fight with each other. Right. Um, and once they do that, the pain is going to increase, the anger is going to increase, and it's going to be more difficult for them to move on in their lives. Well, yeah, sometimes it seems like the attorneys, they almost like stir the pot a little bit to get uh, things going in a heated matter to like say, okay, let's go for the car now. Let's go for half the house or this or that or the other when maybe resolving things in a more peaceful manner. Like you said before, I like how you phrased it, to put this chapter of their lives behind them as opposed to having a lot of angst or anxiety afterwards. Exactly. I mean, just think about when you're angry and you're under a lot of stress and you're emotional, what you feel like at the end of the day. Um, It takes its toll on you. So if you're able to work out disputes by talking through it with the assistance of an impartial third party, the mediator, it's going to be a lot less stressful, and it's going to help you move on faster. Now, do you get neighbors and neighbors? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, because I I almost wanted to go to you guys for our neighbors here. Uh, I can see where that would be something that, especially we live in Hawaii, things are being very congested in the housing market, so we're practically living on top of one another. Right. And instead of starting to vandalize each other's property or like that, um, perhaps a objective media like yourselves can help with a lot of heartache later on. Absolutely. And actually, that's how the Mediation Center started out. It was originally the Neighborhood Justice Center. Mm -hmm. There were justice centers created across the country. But after it was created in 1979, the courts also recognized that they needed to find better ways of helping people resolve issues and um, decrease their backlog. And so we started mediating divorce cases. We are on site at district court for all small claims cases, all eviction cases. Wow. And, and again, you know, if people thought about landlords and tenants, if they thought about mediating early, they'd save a lot of time and angst um, by resolving their issues through mediation. Oh, super. Now, for those of you just joining us, we're talking to Tracy Wilkin at the Mediation Center of the Pacific. Yeah, you're listening to Generations Radio. Um, you can also read about us in Generations Magazine, a free publication offered throughout the state. Um, Tracy, you mentioned something a little bit earlier, and um, a good friend of mine, he's a lawyer that does condominium association law, and there's a lot of litigation uh, with tenants and the board. You indicated that you also do mediation in that uh, between those parties as well? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, it's mandatory by statute under the Hawaii Revised Statute. If an owner and a board are in dispute and one wants to go to mediation, they need to agree. Now, Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs are very supportive of the mediation process, so they actually have two mediation programs that they fund. One is a facilitative approach, um, and essentially the mediators are helping people talk through their issues to see if they can reach an agreement in private and joint sessions. The evaluative approach, um, and this was something new that they started funding a year ago, it's in the statute. Uh, The mediator takes a more proactive role. The mediator has subject matter expertise in condominium law and case law and um, can take a much more proactive role in talking about the strengths and weaknesses of each side's case, which often gives them the incentive to settle. Oh, very good. And because, like you said, once you get into that adversarial situation of the courts getting involved and lawyers getting involved, then sometimes there is no winner because everybody's stuck with this tremendous legal bill. At the right. End. The other important thing to remember about mediation, you know, in addition to helping people resolve their disputes with their own solutions in a less costly manner. It also can help preserve relationships. And when I'm talking about relationships, that can mean a broad variety of things. With an unmarried couple, they may not want to have a relationship with each other, but they're still parents to those kids. And that's why this um, mediation and other forms of dispute resolution are so important Um, with families who are caring for an elder family member. And that's a perfect segue into the reason that I wanted to have you speak to us today is the Kapuna Pono program. Can you explain a little bit about that, please? Absolutely. So with their growing aging population in the islands and more people stepping into the roles as caregivers, um, there's a lot more conflict. It's just inevitable because it's, it's an act of love. It's very stressful to be a caregiver. And we were getting more calls from 
Um, usually it's adult siblings who might be at odds with each other or they might be at odds with their aging parent about care and about needs. So um, we developed a mediation program um, to help families or family members who are in conflict. But as we started seeing some of these issues, we went a step further and we created an additional process called family conferencing. And together these uh, fall into the program Kupuna Pono. So it's helping our our elders, supporting our elders to make it right in, in whatever type of issues have arisen. Well, and I'm so glad, actually, as we're talking, I am looking at the current issue of Generations Magazine. You wrote an article, a full-page article, about the uh, uh, Kupuna program. Kupuna, Kupuna Pono program of preventing and resolving family conflicts. Um, in my line of work, I deal a lot with conflict, with elder abuse, when it gets to be the extreme. But I constantly get phone calls from people that are so frustrated. And, and I have learned basically over the years that the largest segment of caregivers in Hawaii are family members. And one thing that people need to realize is that you can, as an adult child, be the best accountant in the world, be the best lawyer, the best plumber in the world. But when you're forced to be a caregiver, sometimes you don't have all the skills you need to become an effective caregiver. And that's, I think, where a lot of frustration comes about. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And then there's all the other fi- family dynamics that fall in with that. For example, you may have one sibling who is good in the caregiver role, so is assuming those primary responsibilities, but is getting burned out, right. doesn't want to say something, but becomes resentful of his or her siblings. Or you have the siblings that live on the neighbor island or the mainland. They actually feel bad that they can't help more, but there's resentment on the part of the one that is caregiving. Oh, yeah. And that's something I yeah. see all the time where you get like the person that's on Oahu that because the siblings have moved to the mainland, they're just saying, Phew, okay, I'm glad I'm not in Oahu now. We'll let that one sibling take care of everything. That's right. And it is, unfortunately, growing old in Hawaii is very expensive. Growing old with needing care is super expensive. And we have these great facilities. Um, I call them the four-star facilities out here <laughs> that you need to, like, be a millionaire practically to live comfortably as you age. And unfortunately, given the high price of living in paradise, many, many, many people cannot afford these four-star luxury areas here. So they're forced to um, stay at home. They're forced to not hire an agency, but forced to have family members give up their job at times, um, take shifts between the different siblings, the different nieces, nephews to join in there. And it can be taxing, even though you have relatives loving the family member they're caring for, physically, emotionally, it does take a toll. That's absolutely right. And there's just a multitude of issues that come up. I mean, in Hawaii, many people don't work just one job. They work more than one job. And so then they add on caregiving, taking care of their own family members. Um, and it's a lot of pressure and stress, and people don't have the time to talk to each other. The other issue that we see a lot is maybe the siblings, then because they're busy and they're doing the best they can, they start making decisions amongst themselves and not honoring what their elder parent wants that they're taken care of um, because they're just, it's not that they don't want to be respectful, they're just too busy to stop and have that conversation and deal with the issue. And that's if you get a parent that can be active in the caregiving portion, but what if you have someone with Alzheimer's? Exactly. And that becomes really difficult. And and that's one of the reasons I want to talk a little bit about how that family conferencing process works. I mentioned earlier about how the mediation process works. So if you have family members who are in conflict, then they need to use the mediation process to try and resolve it. If you have um, a loved one who now needs care, um, and then what we do is we bring every family member together, and it could be extended family, it could be um, direct family, it could be even a, a neighbor or somebody else who is intimately involved 
with the elder person. And so we find out who needs to be involved in this family conference. We talk to each of them in advance to find out what their concerns are. And then we schedule a family conference at a day and time that works for them. Ideally, if the elder person is able to um, communicate um, on behalf of themselves or, or at least can be alert enough to participate, um, we um, invite their participation as well. And I'll talk about when they can't participate, how okay. we make okay. sure their voice okay. is heard. But so essentially then we bring everyone together. We work with a team of two facilitators. Uh, we make sure we have some food. We want to set a nice <laughs> setting for It sounds like a long day or a long evening yeah. when you do this here. Now, right. is this at the, uh, your offices or you go to the home? Actually, um, what we prefer not to do it in the homes. We okay. do it at our office, which is located on the corner of Kukui and Aala Street with okay. lots of ample free parking. Mm -hmm. But we'll also go out within the community. We've actually done family conferences at Kaiser Moanalua hospital. Oh, um, we've done that in um, assisted living um, if they are able to provide us with a room. Um, and we have done them out in the park um, okay, because that good. was where the family was comfortable meeting. So Excellent. we make it accessible for the family. Um, and, and that's our goal is we want it to be accessible. We want it to be comfortable. So we try and set a stage for having an effective conversation. I can see where this would sometimes bring up such negative emotions. Absolutely. You know, sometimes you have, and, you know, we've had families who say, well, we really don't get along well, but we all love mom, mm -hmm. and that's why we're here. And, and that's what's important. They have to be able to come together to focus on the needs of the elder person. So we always start the family conference off with the question, what makes your family unique? What's special about your family? And we ask each one of them just to give one adjective or one thought. We capture that. Um, then we talk about what's important to mom or dad, whoever the conference is focused on. Right. Um, because these pieces of information become critical guidelines for the conversation later. It's not about us. It's about what's important to their family and it's about what's important to their elder that they're taking yeah, and care of. Actually, that's very good that you do ask their opinion as to what mom and dad thinks is important there. Exactly. I'm sure that helps with the plan of how to take care of them. Exactly, because the focus should be on what mom or dad wants, not what they think is the right thing. Right. Exactly. Right. And so ideally, if mom or dad are there, they can speak for themselves. But if not, we ask the family members the question. And you know, it, it becomes really important later when the conversation hits difficult um, questions, such as when mom needs full-time care, where is she going to live? Mm -hmm. And if earlier in the conversation they said, hey, mom's really independent, mom's a fighter, mom wants to stay in her home as long as possible, then that's going to be the focus of that conversation as opposed to we're moving mom out. It's going to be how what can we do to help ensure that mom can stay if possible. And I'm sure that during that whole period of time, you get people realistically thinking that what are the realistic options? Exactly. Because exactly. because I've been in situations, or I've heard situations where they say, okay, well, mom will stay at home. That's nice, but she can't stay at home by herself. Right. Um, so realistically, we have to have people go in there, maybe all chip in for an agency or something, but we have to address it at this time. Exactly. And so we have an agenda with all the issues. And essentially what we find is it follows a similar pattern. It's about medication management. It's about eating. It's about socialization. It's about safety in the home or wherever they're living. You know, is it, do they need to bring in somebody to do an assessment? Do there need to be grab bars installed? Or is it that it's just no longer safe? Does there need to be 24-hour care, and if yes, who's going to provide that? How's that going to work? Who's going to pay for it? Who's managing the finances? And so we just go down each of these issues, even to the point of talking about end of life, you know, and wow. what's important to them. Okay. Yeah, it's, you know, once the family is comfortable with the process, we help them engage in difficult conversations. And as one family expressed to us, well, we've been talking to each other. So one sibling had talked to one, but they didn't ever take the time to come together as a total family unit to have this conversation. And it was real eye-opening for them 
to hear how each of them felt and to be able to reach agreements on each of these issues and walk away at the end. So we capture all the information and then we actually type it up into a family plan. So it's sent out to them usually the following week. So each of them knows what happened in the in the conference. But it, more important is who's going to do what and when is that going to happen? Wow. This is like, I mean, you guys almost sound like you're planners in a sense that when someone is forced to become a caregiver suddenly, let's say through a um, strokes that someone had or an accident or some event that forces the family to come together as caregivers, um, it is overwhelming yep. because all those issues you just brought um, happened to my own family. And we're going to get into that after this break coming up here. Um, but for those of you that can't stick around to after the break, let me get um, this number out. It's to the Mediation Center of the Pacific. Um, if you want to give them a call, um, Tracy Wilkin from there is um, speaking to us, and their number is 521-6767. Again, that's 521-6767. We'll be repeating that at the uh, next half hour um, before the last break. Thank you very much. Percy Ihara from Generations Radio. If you have any questions or want to be part of our discussion, give us a call at 296-5467. That's 296-5467. This is Generations Radio on AM 690, The Answer. Did you know 26 million Americans have kidney disease and most don't know it? The day I was diagnosed, I didn't know what to do. I called the National Kidney Foundation, and the young lady who answered stayed on the phone with me and walked me through step by step. She, too, was surviving kidney disease. and She showed me there could be life after kidney disease. Visit the National Kidney Foundation at kidney.org. Now you know. Moon Physical Therapy is here to help you back to recovery. Moon Physical Therapy is located on Ward Avenue across from Sports Authority. Physician prescribed for motor vehicle accidents, workman's comp, or that body pain that comes from rushing to play without warming up. Also event cardiopulmonary rehabilitation with our one-on-one -on -one patient care. Moon's Aqua Therapy heated endless pool allows for low impact exercise with less pain on land. We will give you the right exercises to get you back to health. Ask your doctor to prescribe moon physical therapy moon physical therapy we achieve results aloha this is martha clopin and al harrington choosing the right medicare plan not only saves you money it also helps you avoid headaches and heartaches down the road we want to remind everyone to listen to a medicare moment with martha sundays from 9 30 a.m to 10 a.m as we help answer important questions on medicare so you can stay healthy wealthy and wise all year long call me at 543-2073 543-2073 I was an addict from the age of 13. I finally decided it was time for a change. I walked into the Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Center, and that got me ready for the real world. Now, I choose to be guided by Jesus Christ, and today, I'm building a powerful and promising future, free from drugs and alcohol. Please shop at the Salvation Army Family Stores. With our discounted sales, your support through your purchase helps men live a clean, sober, and productive life. Got Vegas on your mind? Get Vacations Hawaii on the line. Vacations Hawaii offers weekly four- and five-night Honolulu to Vegas packages, which include three meals daily from $6.99. Stay at Hawaii's favorite casinos, California, Fremont, Main Street Station, and Orleans Hotel. Vacations Hawaii will get you there in comfort on deluxe wide-body 767 planes with complimentary in-flight hot meal service. Vacations Hawaii's frequent flyer program gives you future travel discounts and credits. So if you're ready to win big, call Vacations Hawaii at 591-4777 or visit pointvacationshawaii.com. Today, more than ever, we local people are living longer than any other state in the union with more seniors, baby boomers, and caregivers. Generations Radio promotes the importance to be proactive as we all age. The radio team will focus on issues facing our seniors and their families, finding resources to navigate healthy aging along with financial, legal, and caregiving information. So join Percy E. Howard from 5 until 6 each Saturday 
right here on AM 690, The Answer. Focusing on the issues facing our seniors and their families today. Here's our Generations Radio host, Percy Ihara. And welcome back to Generations Radio. My name is Scott Spelina. Percy could not make it back today, um, but he's graciously allowed me to take over the show for today. And um, speaking of Percy, speaking of Generations Radio, let me give a, a shout out to uh, Generations Magazine. It's a tremendous resource that you can find pretty much everywhere on the islands, uh, plural, because now they're on the neighbor islands as well. Um, but you can find them at the different various retirement homes. You can find them at um, Safeway. That's actually where I get a lot of mine as well. Um, downtown Kiosk. And it's a tremendous resource for anybody that's aging healthily or not so healthily because it has a lot of prevention. Um, and we're talking about how um, in this current issue on the stands right now is the um, workshop, the Aging in Place annual workshop in August 20th, a um, couple months away. Um, so make plans to attend this free workshop on Saturday at the Alamoana Hotel from 8.30 to 2.30 p.m. Um, it's just chock full of good information. There's going to be over 60 vendors slash exhibitors there giving a lot of information on how to age in place. How instead of you going to find yourself at the care home or care facility, how you can age with dignity, with grace, with confidence at home. There's a lot of those resources. And in order to also age at home, oftentimes you do need family support to age at home. And that's why we have a very special guest today, uh, Tracy Wilkin from the Kapuna, po Kapuna Pono Program at the Mediation Center of the Pacific. Thank you again, Tracy, for joining us. Happy to be here, Scott. All right. Um, Tracy is um, telling us right before the break, and again, you can hear us on Saturday, and we can hear, and it's a replay on Sunday of this program, or if you want to hear the entire program again at your leisure, you can go to generations808.com. Again, that's generations808.com for not only this radio show, but all the pr um, current radio shows, as well as the back issues of Generations Magazine. If you want to get that article that perhaps I wrote about elder abuse um, and you don't know where to find it, go to the website and you can find it there. Um, but before the break, Trace is telling us how the Mediation Center of the Pacific's uh, Kapuna Pono program helps families that are faced with um, caring for a loved one at home. And that's something that I myself had to deal with um, along with my family in that, gosh, maybe 10 years ago now, um, my father-in-law, um, he had a massive stroke. And it, he had uh, full paralysis to the right side of his body. And I'm a lawyer. My brother-in-law, he works city and county, electrical. Uh, my wife, she's a social worker. And we are all competent in our fields, but we are not competent to become a caregiver um, to someone that needed a lot of help. And in listening to what Tracy is talking about, everything they cover and that meeting, I guess you'd call it, it's overwhelming to become a caregiver suddenly. Um, Unfortunately, not a lot of families these days have um, long-term care insurance, so they have to rely on loved ones to aid in the care. And when you're suddenly thrust, and oftentimes you are, it's not something that gradually happens oftentimes. It's because of a heart attack. It's because of a stroke. It's because of a diagnosis of cancer. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people, they feel that they're going to live to be 100 years old in perfect health and then die in their sleep one night. And as we know, with modern medicine, we're staying alive longer, but that doesn't mean we're staying alive healthier, if that's uh, such a term there. And so there is a gradual decline in a great many of us, and we need help um, becoming caregivers. And in my situation, it was a sudden thrusting of becoming a caregiver along with my entire family. And we had to do certain things that Tracy just mentioned. We had to um, almost reinvent the house make it ADA compliant, um, putting on the grab bars, as she said. We had to make it to where we could fit a wheelchair in. I mean, there was like just small things. Like we had a little step up into the house. We needed a ramp. Um, like who was going to do the cooking? And I think that one of our mistakes that we made 
is relying on my mother-in-law to do a lot of it. Feeling that, okay, my mother-in-law, she lives there. She doesn't seem to mind. But being a caregiver of someone is not a job. It's a lifestyle. Um, a job, you can go home right at 4.30. You can sit back, relax, um, crack open a beer or three, and then watch your Wheel of Fortune. Being a caregiver to a loved one at home, you're there constantly because you're there maybe to uh, cook the dinner, to serve it to them, to clean up after them, to help them in the shower at night, to help them with um, getting on their bed dressings, um, putting the bed, waking up, and starting the process all over again. And so I think that my um, my brother-in-law, my wife and I, I think that we were just ignorant in allowing our mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, to take care of a lot of that. And it, it has been a toll over the years. And I think that if we did actually go to the Kapunapono program, I think that we would be in a much better position than we are right now. Tracy? Yeah, absolutely. You're right, Scott. And, you know, what we're encouraging people to think about as soon as there's a diagnosis of Alzheimer's, dementia, um, that they come together in a family conference to talk about what are the current needs and how are we going to handle that and what might the future needs look like and start talking about it now. Um, because as you said, you're never, you're never prepared for caregiving. And then you have, not only do you have a plan and you have everybody talking, but you also now have developed a structure for getting back together once in a while, to reviewing the plan, to helping all of you move forward through this very challenging time in your life. And I think that's super important because again, in my own um, family, we would talk about it but I don't think we ever reached a consensus to where as soon as one person left and the other person ended up doing what they wanted to do because convenient and not realizing that I know better. I know what's needed. I know what's needed. I know what's needed. But we never had a consensus. We were never on the same page genuinely. We all talked about, oh, let's work together, but without maybe, as your program provides, a independent mediator to basically force people to have this unpleasant conversation, but a necessary conversation, um, to get people on the same page to work together. Exactly. And, you know, we ask questions that you might not even think about asking each other because you're in overwhelm. You have your own right. responsibilities and you haven't even thought about some of the questions that we'll ask. So, for example, if one family member is m administering the medication or maybe the elder person is taking their own medication, we'll ask, well, you know, when is that medication administered and how does that work and is that working? And then the one might say, oh, well, I just put it out. I just sit it out for her in the morning and she takes it herself. And another sibling may say, oh, you can't do that. You know, half of let, it's supposed to be me, with food. Let me tell you, yeah, <laughs> that whole medication thing. I mean, we have medications delivered to my in-law's house. And even when it's delivered, even when it's individually packaged, it's confusing. I can't even pronounce. And I went to law school. I can't even pronounce half this medication to where my wife, I mean, she's an expert at it by now, but I just end up saying, is this the small green pill or the bigger green pill? And the one that looks like a round thing, because as we age, we're going to need, unfortunately, lots of times, either medication, supplements, or whatever. And that can be overwhelming in and of itself. Exactly. Or sometimes, you know, one sibling is doing all the work, but the other siblings want to help, but the one that's doing the work won't ask for help. Um, and, or maybe they want to know more detail about what's going on. They want to be more involved. And you can't have each sibling contacting the physician. And so, right, exactly. You know, exactly. And, and so just having those conversations and, and doing it early. Unfortunately, what we find is – People wait until they're in crisis, right. um, and then they're seeking help. And so we're really encouraging this should just be the, the next step when there's a diagnosis or when there's a change. So, for example, an elder person um, ends up in the hospital. You know, maybe they fell or maybe they're, you know, they develop pneumonia or whatever it is. They end up in the hospital, and now they're going to need more care. And the family needs to come together to talk about that. What that what's that going to look like? You know, are, is, are they going to be moved back home? And how's that care going to be provided? And what exactly does that care look like? Because you don't, you don't think of all of the questions and all the details 
that you need to talk about. If if there's a lot of medication, is somebody running over to pick it up? Is it delivered to the house? If the person who's taking care of the elder person is picking up the medication and cooking the food and doing the laundry, right. yep. they can't do it all. And, um, and actually, I, the service that you're providing, I call that family togetherness insurance because, like you say, you have to plan early, um, like like in car insurance. You don't get the insurance after the accident. You get it before the accident exactly. to ensure that you're not bankrupt as a result of a accident. With the services you're providing, you're insuring that the family will stay together during this crisis of becoming caregivers. That's absolutely right. I mean, your, your loved one is in the final phases of their life, and, and that's sad. And you want to be able to be as strong a, of a family unit as possible to support them. Um, and so when they pass, they can do it within a loving family, not a family who is arguing with each other. And, 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 and you're 100 right. Yeah. I see this over and over and over again where and, – and God bless parents. They want to keep peace within the family. So they might be telling one set of siblings one thing to keep them uh, pacified, another set of siblings another thing to keep them pacified. And then when the siblings talk to each other, they're hearing different things. They're accusing each other of not doing a good job or abuse or whatever. And it's just because there's no communication going on. That is correct. And that is the value of bringing them together. And it's, you know, it's a three-hour conference where we can go through all these issues um, help them reach agreements, set up action plans. And the other important, valuable piece of the family conference is sometimes they'll say, okay, we need to, we need to talk about the house. You know, it's kind of cluttered. Uh, we may need to have things uh, done, but we're not sure what that is. And so um, we help them look into resources. We might suggest, well, you can contact this resource and they'll send somebody over to do an assessment of the house. Mm-hmm. Who's going to call them? When do you think you can coordinate that? So there's a lot of resources out there, but families don't know about the resources, and we can help direct them to them. Well, your mediators then must be well-versed in all these type of resources. Uh, They are, and we're always trying to learn more and stay on top of things. Our mediators go through a lot of training um, to be able to work in this arena, and we're constantly having – workshops, bringing in speakers um, so that we can stay on top of all the information and what's going on so we can make sure that we can be as useful um, and as valuable as possible to the families we're working with. And that's very, very important because uh, as you as I mentioned before, I do go to a lot of workshops. I do go to a lot of senior events, whether it be the um, Aging in Place Conference hosted by Percy Har and the Generations Magazine or the Good Life Conference, or the Primetime Expo. And there are resources out there for people. Unfortunately, you get overwhelmed when you go to a big Blaisdell type of area, and there's over 300 vendors there. And it's like, oh, where do I go first? And I've had people with this bewildered look coming to my booth saying, like, I've just become a caregiver to my mom. I don't know where to begin. And it sounds like uh, the Mediation Center of the Pacific is an actual good starting place. Absolutely. Um, one good thing I like that you've brought out before is the communication with the parent to make sure that their needs are heard. Because oftentimes I see in situations where the children feel they know best what's for the parents. Exactly. And <clears throat> and. It's a matter of respecting your parent. We all want to be respected. Um, the core values of the Kapuna Pono program are respecting the culture of the family, respecting the desires and values of the elder person and bringing those out, and balancing independence with safety because that's a, that's a real difficult um, balance sometimes when you're a caregiver, you want your parent to be as independent as possible, but you also want them to be safe. So now, now what if you get in a situation where, and, and also I like what you said about sometimes it's not at your office. Sometimes it's at the park or sometimes it's at the hospital. Sometimes it's where the family can be most comfortable because I'm sure sometimes this is a marathon session where mm-hmm. you're working at the details or at least getting the communication started there. Um, but what if the parent has unrealistic goals? Then that's part of the conversation okay. um, about why or why, how those goals 
can be met as much as possible, but if not, what the other options are. And then it's getting the family members to brainstorm and be creative. It doesn't have to be just, okay, well, mom, there's no way we're going to keep you in the house, so you're moving into assisted living. (laughs) You know, what other ideas are there? You know, is it daycare? Could there be people move in the house and rent or or, I mean, okay, you, you, okay. you know, we try and help them be so you creative. To, yeah, I was about to say you have to be very creative in this job then. Exactly. Uh, and look at something because I'm sure that oftentimes you get families coming in there and already the walls. I mean, I, I envision one of those like survivor type of reality shows mm-hmm. where they've already had the alliances formed. Mm-hmm. They've already had like fingers pointing at each other. They're already like heels dug in. And you have to break down a lot of walls. Exactly. You have to get a lot of communication going. Um, because already, I'm sure there's been a lot of yelling, screaming, throwing things at each other before they even come to your office. Right. And, you know, if they're that entrenched in conflict, then they might need mediation first <laughs> before they go into a family <laughs> conference. So, and sometimes we have, you know, explained that if there's a couple siblings that they are just at loggerheads. And, and then we have them participate in a mediation process, just the two of them. Once they're able to work through their issues or at least they're able to set them aside so that in a family conference they're going to focus on needs of mom and dad as opposed to, you know, I'm so mad at you, brother, because I think you've done a lousy job or I think mom always loved you better and that's why she's giving you money and all those things that – So we're looking at revealing deep-seated issues often. Oh, absolutely. I'm not just like who's going to feed mom every day, but we're dealing with, I guess, the – lifetime sometimes of perceived affections, not affections, abuses or whatever that are going to come to the forefront saying, the reason I don't want to do this is because of this. You become an actuality therapist. It sounds like. Oh, well, we don't do therapy. Okay. So yeah, let's make that <laughs> there, real There's clear. no couches then. You're saying there's no, no couches during this No thing couches, here. no therapy. And yeah. if they do need therapy, we might direct them to that resource. Mm. You know, our, our job is to help them talk, to help them understand each other's perspectives, to focus on the needs of the elder person, and to come up with agreements and plans that are going to support those needs. And, you know, again, if they're if they're so entrenched in the relationship that they have with each other or the not good relationship, then they might, they might need to go to counseling or some other resource. Oh, very good. Uh, for those of you joining us, we're talking to uh, Tracy Wilkin from the uh, Mediation Center of the Pacific. Uh, the Kapuna Pono program, and you're listening to Generations Radio, um, part of the Generations Network of Generations Magazine and Generations808.com, um, talking about senior issues. And today we're focusing on the Kapuna Pono program, which basically helps families come together, open up um, bridges of communication to help care for loved ones. Uh, now, Tracy, you mentioned earlier how. And this, I guess, the initial meeting when you try to get all the families together, what if all the family is not on Oahu? Um, do you make special arrangements regarding that? Absolutely. Great question. Um, if they can't fly over and participate, we actually at the Mediation Center of the Pacific have a big screen TV and Skype access. Are so, you serious there? Uh, oh, my yeah. gosh. That's excellent. Yeah. There. Now we've had many family members participate via Skype. So, you know, even though they can't be there physically, at least they can see each other and, and they participate in the conversation that way. That is so good because I oftentimes hear from um, families in the mainland thinking that there might be abuse going on because they're left out of mm-hmm. a lot of decision making here. But when you provide a forum that allows families from the mainland to participate, I'm sure that relieves a lot of anxiety. Absolutely. And and as you said, you know, sometimes that's the whole issue is you have one person who's doing all the caring, kind of calling all the shots. Right. And the other family members, either they just want to know what's going on or they want to be able to give some input. And And as you said earlier, make agreements and decisions together. Right. Um, and one good thing I like is that – I don't know how to phrase this nicely, but you take away an excuse of the mainland family members not participating. Because oh, when, when they say like – and they tell their siblings, well, I'm not there, so I don't feel I need to participate or you guys take care of everything and just I want to wash my hands of it. By you providing an avenue saying, no, you can be here. You can participate then that kind of like shares the responsibility to them as well. And I think that makes them feel more invested in the caring of their mom or dad or grandmother or grandfather to where even though they may not be here physically, 
um, allowing them to participate, and it might be even contributing monetarily if, let's say, that the um, sibling that is here taking um, full-time care, if maybe if they contribute a little bit to allow that sibling a day off or two to hire somebody. Absolutely. And these are all the creative conversations and outcomes that we have, whether it's mediation or a family conference. Yeah. Because, again, in my own situation, it can be extremely stressful. And just last night, my wife and I were talking. It's like seeing how we've relied on my mother-in-law to become the primary caregiver. And now with my mother-in-law's health um, declining somewhat, hopefully from a temporary um, ailment, that now our lives are going to be changed and we need to open up this communication because my brother-in-law he's in over his head because he's i think we relied on him to be the primary caregiver i'm um, not really how much stress he's under and we see him like buckling sometimes and losing his temper when usually he's not a um, bad mood type of person there mm -hmm. and when we see him losing a temper we're thinking okay we know there's too much stress going on. We need to hire somebody. We need to get on the same page on what's going on, not just say like, okay, we'll take care of this one night. We'll take care of this one night. Um, I like what you mentioned about laying this, I guess, caregiver contract. Mm -hmm. um, can you give a little more details on that? Yeah, it's a, it's a we call it a family plan, but essentially it's talking about each issue, each concern, and reaching agreements about it. And, you know, so we have a team of two facilitators and one we're doing it the old fashioned way. At some point we may go electronic, but we're capturing it on the flip chart okay. so that everybody <laughs> can see it. That's right. So everybody can see right. it. Right. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's easy. And then we take those agreements and we electronically then type it up into a family plan. And so each issue, you'll see what the family agreed to, who's going to do what, when is that going to happen? And and pretty much each plan is going to follow the same order. It's about medication. It's about safety in the home. It's about socialization. It's about personal care. It's about, um, you know, how much care is needed. Does there need to be somebody there living And, and again, living I, I think that by you doing this, you're bringing these issues that no one's thinking about when they're suddenly thrust into a caregiving situation. That's correct. And it's like... And it's so easy to be overwhelmed as a caregiver that that's why when I heard Tracy talk about the Kapuna Pono program, I knew that I wanted to share her information to everybody listening to this radio show. And again, if you need Tracy's services through the Mediation Center of the Pacific's Kapuna Pono program, I beg you to give them a call at 521-6767. Again, that's 521-6767 because the Kapuna Pono program saves families. Uh, there's so much resentment that can form in families trying to care for loved ones that the families can disintegrate and create lasting hostility amongst one another. That's why I say that the Kapuna Pono program saves families for not only during the care, but dealing with the emotions after the care. Um, in the few moments we have, Tracy, is there anything else you'd like to share about your program? I just um, will reinforce what you just said. I encourage families to access the program and access it early. Um, as soon as there's a diagnosis, as soon as there's a change in status of your elder family member, um, it's time to bring your family together to have that conversation. Yeah, and, it, and it's no shame. I mean, just go in there because... Not everybody's prepared to become a caregiver of a loved one. And that's something that you just have to say, you know what, I'm an expert in my field of expertise. However, being a caregiver for a loved one is serious, it's stressful, it's frustrating, and there's a lot of things you will not think about. But Tracy's team has years and years of experience dealing with and will help you to maybe not find all the solutions, but ask the right questions. Um, I thank Tracy for being here this afternoon, and I thank you for joining us for the Generations Radio program. Um, this is something that Percy Hara um, brought together. Um, he created, he's a publisher of the Generations Magazine. Um, again, it's a free publication. Um, this issue of Generations Magazine, you can find an article from Tracy about the Kapuna Prono program, as well as articles in every issue um, about elder abuse from myself, Scott Spilina. 
And in August, we invite everybody to come down to the Ala Moana um, Hotel for the Aging in Place Conference hosted by Percy Har and the Generations team. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.